Sally here and today I am going to be making um, a quilted mug rug. I made them for my kids for Christmas and I wanted to make one for myself and for a friend. And so I've got some thin cotton batting uh, that's cut to six by nine inches. And then I have a a piece of fabric that's cut just slightly bigger. I've used a bunch of just different fat quarters that I'd gotten at Joanne. And then I just had this little piece of batting left that I didn't want to go to waste. So I'm just making mine. Let's see. I don't even know how big it is. I just, it's about six and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So just kind of a weird random size same backing. And I just cut the piece of fabric a little bit bigger because I'm going to be doing quilt as you go. So I'm going to make um, a rainbow of fabrics with a little sun. So I've got some pieces of yellow cut out for the suns and I just traced the bottom of this cup um, for the size for the sun. And so I've drawn on it with pencil, and I think maybe I'll just line these up so I don't have to cut so many. And so I'm just going to cut two for each of my mug rugs. So it's just cutting in a circle. So I'll do that and come right back. Okay, now that I have both of my little suns cut out, I'm going to put them right sides together. And then just sew all the way around the edge, about a quarter inch away. And I'm not going to leave an opening. I'm just going to, since it's going to be sewn down, uh, the one side won't show. So I'm just going to cut a little slit and then turn it right side out. So I'm going to sew around these and be right back. Okay, these are all sewn up now. So I'm just going to pull them apart. And make sure they're separate so you're not cutting all the way through. And make just a little slit cut and then make the cut a little bit bigger and then just oh I guess you could um, to make the edges more even move this out of the way you could make little like little V cuts all the way around just make sure you're not cutting through the stitching I mean, cut the fabric away. Those aren't. I guess I'm not cutting them right. Let's see if I can get it to cut all the way away. There we go. Anyway, I um, found I didn't really need to do that, but I did trim it to be about an eighth of an inch so that it would lay flatter and be more round. And I just sewed really slow to try to keep it as much of a circle as I could. It looks okay. I mean, it's kind of hard to sew a circle. For me, anyway. Okay, so now we'll just turn it right side out and then I just used my um, bone folder it's nice and rounded and just went right along the seam like this and then um, pressed it flat. So I'm gonna do that to the other one and press it and come back. All right, those are ready to go. So you just take your batting side up and decide where you want your sun. So the way I did it was, you know, just, you know, so this edge was just about in the half and kind of hung off the edge a little bit. So it kind of looked like the sun was rising. So I just um, 
I used a sharpie to trace to trace where I want it so I can see where to place the other fabrics because you want to make sure that it's all covered so I just kind of try not to touch my little sun but this on the batting will definitely get covered up so this one I have to decide how I want to do this maybe about Right there. I think I want it higher because it's a different shape. Okay, so now I have a bunch of fabrics picked out that are, you know, Roy G. Biv to make a rainbow. And so I'm starting with this red. So what I did was I just figured out how big I wanted my um, section to be. So you can kind of feel and it will be, you know, that big minus a quarter inch because you're gonna sew. I think I want it a little bit bigger. You just need to make sure that it's going to be all covered. Okay, and then you take your orange and you put it down right sides together. And let's see, do I want my stripes? Let's see, I want my stripes going this way. Okay, so I'm going to put this along here and then flip it back to make sure that you're going to be able to cover the batting. So we're, I'm just going to sew through all the layers a quarter inch just to, just to where this circle line is. And actually, I think I'll put it up here because I think that will waste less fabric, I think. Yeah, I think that will work best. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew, I wonder if I should put, no, that'll work. Okay, anyway, just trying to conserve as much fabric as possible. Um, so I used a walking foot, so I'm, if, I don't think you really need one, but I think I'll use one since I'm sewing, you know, it's like a quilt as you go kind of thing. So I'm just going to sew a quarter inch away right here and then come back. Now that I have that sewed, I am going to flip this over. And then you just decide um, how wide you want it to be. So I think I want it just kind of be here. So then you can just um, trim it with your scissors. So I think I that and then you can flip it over and then I used um, the mat itself and just cut cut around the oh you can't see that cut around the edge so cut this first piece You may want to press it before you trim. I think I just pressed them and then trimmed them right at the ironing board. And I made the other ones. Okay. So, 
that's what it looks like so far. Okay, so then I'll just take a yellow piece and put it right here. Let me, oh, I can't remember what I did with my... Oh, I covered them up with those pieces. So, so I have this yellow that I wanted to use. Let's see. Is that even going to... Let's see if that will... That, that's going to be a skinny little strip of yellow. So, you kind of, well, you know... I'll have to cut it in like a wedge shape like this, but should work unless I did it. I wonder if I did it more this way. Then maybe. Now that, well, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. I think maybe I'll overlap it a little bit since this edge is really frayed. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew again a quarter inch down and I forgot when I was sewing this one, um, you wanna stop pretty close to the edge of your circle because all your stitching is gonna show on the back. So I had one fabric for the backing that was pretty busy and it hid the stitching pretty well so you couldn't see how how inexperienced I am as a quilter um, so I kind of forgot but I just I just um, picked those stitches out so just remember when you're when you are sewing to end pretty close to where your circle is if you want you know all your edges to uh, you know, have your circle on the back look like, you know, less messy, I guess, really is what I'm trying to say. Okay, that should work. All right, so I'm going to sew this one on. And you know what? I don't even, I didn't even press. And, you know, the batting is holding that down pretty good. So I'm not going to worry about pressing as I go. Okay, be right back. All right, so now I will flip this over, and I'm just going to um, trim this bottom to where it will overlap the circle still, but not be covering it all the way up. Finger press this a little bit better. And then just, again, trim this all off. Okay, so I know I don't want that that big because I still have one, two, three, still have four other colors to put on. I shouldn't have made these so big, I guess. I did this last time too. Maybe I could skip the indigo and just do blue and purple. That's how most people do their rainbows anyway. So, um, okay, so next I have the green. Okay, so I'm going to fold my back and batting back and just trim this even, this green piece of fabric. And now just fold this over. Oh dear. Ooh. That's going to have to be skinny because I didn't... Oh, whoops. Sorry, you can't see. But I didn't, uh, I think I'm going to have to make this wedge end right there because I didn't uh, cover that very well. Okay, so 
now I will flip this over and trim it even. Now, I'm just going to quilt each section. So what I did was, let me try to remember now what I did. I drew a circle, if I remember right. This one I did with pencil. Let's see, I do have a pencil. And um, I just put my sun down where I was going to put it and drew with the pencil. Oops. Or you could use, you know, an erasable marker or something because this one might show. And it's hard to see on those dark fabrics. Oh my heavens. That really is not showing up. I'm kind of going under my little circle. That way, hopefully, it won't show. I just need to know where to uh, quilt. So, the way I quilted my other ones, and I'm going to do the same, was I started here and then went a little ways and came in and went around the circle and then out and do, 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 and then right along the uh, seam, well, close to the seam, and then I just sewed over at the edge and down the other seam, and then when it's skinny like this, I just came to the point and then out and then over a little bit and then back to the same point like this. And that way I could go all the way around without a bunch of stopping and starting. And I think it looked okay. I tried um, like, you know, doing different different kind of quilting. When I had this fabric, I, I think I just sewed along these straight lines. So the quilting looked a little bit different. And you know, you could definitely do all kinds of stuff with this. You could do um, your decorative stitches on it. You could do try, you know, free motion, which I've never done, so I didn't dare try. But that's how I quilted it, and it was the seemed to be the easiest. So I'm gonna go quilt this, and then I'll be back. So here it is, all quilted up. So I'm just going to put my little sun on here and like I said I'm gonna have it hang off the bottom a little bit and then just um, so uh, about maybe three circles around and then it will be ready to be bound and then it's all done so I'll be right back okay the little sun is all done so what I'm gonna do is just um, trim this up.
Okay, oh, just always looks so much better when it's trimmed, doesn't it? Okay, so I am going to bind this. I don't know with what color. Oh, that's too much blue. Um, I'll find a color, but um, so I'm going to just use a two inch wide strip, fold it in half, and then bind around. I'll link to a tutorial that I liked for teaching how to bind um, a project. So I will bind it, and so I'm going to sew on the front of the binding and then turn it over and then I'll hand stitch it on the back. I like the way that looks best. So I will, I'm going to sew up this other one that I was making for me and quilt it before I do the binding. So um, I'll come back when both of these are all finished. All right, I have this one all the way done. So there's the back. So like I said, I hand stitched the back because I like the way that looks better. And I found this really cute polka dot rainbow fabric at Walmart. And I think it turned out so cute. And so it's a mug rug. So just, you know, imagine this is a mug. You put this here and then you have, you know, pretend that's a cookie. Um, your cookies on here and it's just it's just right for a little drink and a little snack um, so I I got mine done except for the stitching on the back which I think I'll wait to do tomorrow maybe I'll bring it to work to do in my spare moments but there's that one it's more square so it kind of you know it works too but uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I did get this idea off of a blog, so I will leave a link down below to that blog post. And um, super quick, really easy and fun. Perfect for if you have scraps, you could do any colors you wanted. Um, and then, like I said, I'll leave a to the link down below for how I learned how to do the binding. Um, so that does it. So thanks for watching.